Hello everyone and welcome to the Galena Public Library's YouTube channel. My name is Larissa Disler. I'm the Adult Services Librarian here. This program is with David Ryan, the author of this book, Exploring Galena and Dubuque on Foot, as well as other books. I'll leave some links in the description below as well as at the end of this program. If you'd like to see more content like this or like anything at the Galena Public Library, please leave us some comments down below like this video, subscribe to this channel, and you can also click that little bell for notifications. Thank you so much and enjoy this program. The actual root of the book, Exploring Galen and Dubuque on Foot, came to me several years ago when I was working on this book called The Gentle Art of Wandering. And in that book, wandering is really about allowing yourself to see and then letting what you see guide you on where you go. And like our walks, it just sets you up for making all kinds of discoveries you know, while walking. It's like looking at the world with a new pair of eyes. And all of the walks described in the book, Exploring Galena and Dubuque on Foot, are based upon the principles of wandering. And it was while working on the wandering book that you know, I became aware of public stairs for exploring a community because one of the sections in the, in the wandering book is about going through these hilly neighborhoods of Los Angeles and just doing it all on foot going on public stairways. And when I finished that, you know, I realized with all the bluffs and hills around Galena and Dubuque, there had to be public stairways in the area. So my dog Petey and I, we took a road trip to uh, Galena just for the whole sole purpose of looking for stairways. And this was this was about seven years ago. Now, now you could ask yourself, I happen to live in New Mexico, and why would somebody living in New Mexico be aware of Galena or Dubuque? And and I had to say that I grew up in Chicago and spent most most of my life there, but but my father's family happens to be originally from Galena. So, uh, and so because of that, I always had an awareness of Galena. I visited Galena many times while in Chicago. And, but I had never, never given any thought about public stairways. So when PD and I came to Galena, it was like looking at this with a whole new set of eyes. And, and, you know, what we discovered in both Galena and Dubuque were just, amazing and you know in addition to probably in addition to being one of the prettiest areas of the country there's just this a huge concentration of architecture from well like in Galena from the 1840s and 50s and 60s and then in Dubuque let's say from the 1860s through through 1900 and, and it's all easily uh, accessible on foot so so, you know, so what happened is that, uh, you know, I wrote some blog posts. I have a blog I'm wandering called www.gentleartofwandering.com. And so I wrote some blog posts seven years ago, you know, one on Dubuque and one on Galena. And both of those blog posts, you know, they're read, you know, somebody finds them every, you know, several people find them every week. So, so even those they were written some time ago, they're still found. So, so after you know passing through Galena many times, PD and I decided, you know, you know there there must be enough in here to make it worthwhile to put together a book. So PD and I, we went into you know we we took uh, three in depth trips to the area uh, in in the fall of last year to put the book together, and the book came out in April of this year. And unfortunately with COVID, you know, we're speaking through Zoom rather than face to face. But uh, so what I wanna do is I want to um, just show you some of the things that you can discover, you know, while you explore on foot. So I'm going to uh, do the share screen for me and I'll bring up the PowerPoint. All right, can uh, everybody see this okay? I hope so. All right, well, this obviously is the cover of the book. And what we'll do is we'll just start our walk from the library 
And, up, and as you all know, there's a set of stairways to get up to the library. But if you go to the back side of the library, at the end of Magazine Street, there's another set of stairs. And, and I do want to point out that the walks in the book just aren't climbing the stairs. They're going through different neighborhoods too. But, but you know, we'll start a walk by going up these steps. And obviously you can see just looking back, here's an opportunity for some force bathing because you go through a wonderful wooded area. And when we got to the top of the steps, we ran into this sculpture that's made out of an old uh, oil, oil, you know, fuel, you know, heating oil tank. And, and we were talking to the, to the guy there because there's this Linmar Gardens there. When we went through, it was close for the season, but the man who lived there, he took us through and it was just spectacular. There, were, there was a foundation of an old church in there, some mine, uh, mining equipment and just different sculptures. And it turns out that this sculpture here, the guy who made it, he has a whole sculpture park on the west side of, um, I guess it'd be on the south side of Galena, that is, you know, just fantastic. So, so if you like this type of sculpture, there's plenty more to, to find. But, but if we just keep walking along this route, it's going to take us up to Prospect Street, right where the old um, high school is that dominates the uh, scenery in downtown Galena. But if you just continue on along Prospect, you, again, you start finding just fabulous structures everywhere, such as this house. But eventually you'll get to the Washington Street steps. And so what we'll do here is we'll go up the steps and up to, uh, up to High Street. But before getting there, uh, you know, Petey and I, we were here oh, about a week or so before Halloween. And so you can see there was a collection of witches in front of this house. So, and that's that's part of what you just start. You start noticing all the decorations that people have. And then when you get to High Street, we'll go ahead and turn north along High Street and we'll get to the house of Ulysses Grant's house from before the Civil War. And I, you know, I'm greatly aware that, you know, U.S. Grant's post-Civil War home is a major attraction in Galena, but I think the real story involving uh, Ulysses Grant is right here because, because uh, Ulysses Grant moved into this house in April of 1860, and he had been a West Point graduate. Uh, he had fought in the uh, Mexican War and then he was assigned to army posts out in California and along the West Coast. And he was separated from his family. And he was the type of person that needed to have access to his family. And that drove him into a, an amazing depression, which he then tried to fix by drinking. And so he was forced out of the army because of being, a, being drunk. And he had... And he was just at such a low point at that, he had to borrow money so he could get back to the St. Louis area where his family was, but everything he did in the St. Louis area didn't work out. And in fact, in Grant's autobiography, he covers that whole period in about three, two sentences. But, but then, but he, would, he had nowhere else to go, so he had to go to his father who had, a, had leather tanneries in Ohio and a leather business in Galena. So his father gave him a job working for his younger brothers. And so that's why he moved to Galena, but it was the connections he made established in Galena that enabled him to become the general that won the Civil War and went on to become president. And if he hadn't moved, to, if he hadn't moved into this house, it wouldn't have happened for him. So, so it, you know, so I think that's really, you know, a really interesting element as you walk along here. And then if you go to the, by the, the house immediately to the north of this one, you just have all these wonderful uh, ornamentation in the yard. And, and if we go up to the next street, you know, to Hill Street and start heading west, uh, this building here, which is just west of, of High Street, 
that was that's now an apartment building, but it was built as a German Methodist church in 1855. So so I found it really interesting to think that uh, that there were enough German speaking Methodists to support their own church at that time. And that and so it's just part of the discoveries you make. And then then as you just keep going west, right here, we have the house. The house on the left is William Rowley's house. The house on the right is John Rollins' house. And both of these people were uh, friends of Ulysses Grant. He met him in the course of his leather business. And both of them served on Grant's staff during the Civil War and became generals. But John Rollins' house on the right, he, he played an extremely important role in Grant's life because he det because his father was an alcoholic, he detested drinking. So in addition to being Grant's chief of staff, he would be what you might call a sober companion, somebody to keep Grant on the straight and narrow because you can imagine, you know, with all the trauma of the Civil War, you know, the temptation would be there to just get drunk. And, and Rollins was there to make sure he didn't. And it was that focus by keeping that, you know, and helping Grant keep his focus, that's allowed him to establish a strategy that eventually won the war and then led on to him becoming president. So, so then if we just wind around, you know, back towards the center of Galena, we'll pass this, uh, you know, we'll go by this park by the old cemetery, but a lot, all along the way, there's just wonderful houses like this. And eventually we can get back to the intersection of Washington Street and High Street. And if you notice, there's a no outlet sign. Well, when you're exploring and wandering, that should be your clue to just keep going because there might be a path at the end. And in this case, there's a stairway at the end of the street. And the stairs again, th these are the stairs we came up, but they'll take, this time what we'll do is we'll take the stairs down to Bend Street and we'll continue, I mean, down to Prospect and then continue on to Bench Street. And when we get to Bench Street, you know, we've got the old firehouse on the left and the Methodist church on the right. Well, this is a Methodist church that the Grant family attended. And if you go inside the Methodist church, you can still find the Grant family pew. Now, also, if you decide to walk to the end of Bench Street, to Meeker, you'll find another stairway here next to the old jailhouse. But, but where this picture is taken from, this is the old, this is the uh, court, the county courthouse, and the older part of the structure was the courthouse at the time of Ulysses S. Grant, and and this was a turning point in Grant's life because when the, um, you know, when the Confederates fired on Fort Sumter in April of 1861, you know, all across the nation, there were outrage and town meetings as to what to do. And it was at this town meeting where Grant was invited to speak and he, and basically he found his purpose and he never went back to the, he never went back to the leather business because he knew he was gonna go, go into the army and, and do his part. And, and so it's, so this is a turning point, but, but these steps here next to the jailhouse, if you go up them, at least when I've gone up them, I have seen dozens of deer. I mean, the places, you know, the, it's all wooded and there's houses, but there's just deer everywhere. And I, I understand that in Galena, there's so many deer that they've allowed deer hunting in some parts of the city just to try and uh, keep the keep the herd you know thin enough so there's enough food for everybody but if we if we you know return to the church and go down the you know continue down Washington Street we have another set of steps from uh, Ben Street down to Main Street and we have this little uh, pocket park right across you know you know right at the foot of Grant's family leather business was. It was at the 
you know, the north end of the of the um, building, you know, so the far far left end of the building. But uh, so so you figure that the Washington Street steps now in Grant's day they were made out of wood, but that's the same route that he took. So so he he took those steps every day he went to work, when he went to church, when he went to town to peep to visit with people. That was more or less his connection to the world was going up and down those steps. And and we can still walk those steps today. And and you can get a good picture of it. You know, this is I'm watching just you know, just east of Main Street before we get to the get get to the river, and you can just see the steps going up the side of the hill. And from here, we can uh, take a series of steps and bridges and paths and sidewalks, and we'll eventually get to the Elihu Washburn House. And the Elihu Washburn Elihu Washburn was a congressman, you know, representing Galena at the time, and he was a close political ally of Abraham Lincoln. And so with the rapid expansion of the Union Army, Lincoln, you know, asked, you know, his associates to submit names for people to be generals. And Elihu Washburn advanced Ulysses S. Grant's name. So again, you know, Galena, you know, if Grant hadn't made these connections in Galena, you know, he could have, he probably wouldn't have become a general you know, he might, he would have been in the army, but he would have been in a much lesser role than what he had. And, and also I, I have a personal connection with that house because when Elihu Washburn moved to Chicago, my second great grandfather, Thomas Sheehan, bought the house from the Washburn family. And, and that stayed, you know, within the family until the 18, um, until the 1960s. And in 1958, when I was a little kid, uh, you know, I spent the night there and it, and, you know, my father's great aunt was telling us, but it was right here where Ulysses S. Grant found out he became president. And she was talking about, you know, the house, house to the left wasn't there. And she was talking about how Elihu Washburn had Indian powwows there and, you know, soldiers drilled there. So, so it's just so, you know, it's just amazing to hear all those stories, but to be actual in the room that Ulysses S. Grant found, found out that he was president. So, but this is only the tip of the iceberg of what's in Galena. So what we'll do is we'll fly, jump over the river and we'll hit, you know, go over to Dubuque. And again, what we'll do is we'll start our walk in Dubuque from the Carnegie Stout Library, which is uh, at 11th and Bluff Street. And we're on we're on Eleventh Street, looking east at the library. But if we turn around, there's a sidewalk with steps on it that leads to a stairway that goes through through a portal, you know, in the retaining wall. And that portal was that a hundred years ago there was a funicular railroad going right through that portal to the top of the bluff. There still is a funicular railroad in. Um, in Dubuque, the, the Fenelon Place uh, elevator at 4th Street and Bluff, but, but there used to be a second one going right through that portal. And when you go through that portal, you know, it's almost, it, I've, I've had the opportunity of climbing several hundred public stairways in 20 different states. And the Washington Street steps are spectacular. And the 11th Street steps, are also spectacular in you know the 11th Street steps in Dubuque, and when you come through this portal, it's almost like being, uh, it's like Dorothy and Toto landing in Oz, going from black and white to color, because if you just look around, you just have all these wonderful houses, you know, all along, and then you have another set of steps that'll take you up, you know, even higher on the bluff. And when you get up there, you've got the views looking across Dubuque back into Illinois and Wisconsin. But if you turn around, you've got how you know wonderful houses there, you know, just, just right across the street from the top of the steps. If you make a left-hand turn, whoop, I went the wrong way. If you make a left-hand turn, you'll find 
this massive retaining wall. And, and if, if there's one way to identify Dubuque, I think it's these massive retaining walls because they, they are everywhere in Dubuque, these big limestone block retaining walls. And what they uh, do is they allow on these bluffs to be sort of developed like tiers of a wedding cake because at the top of this bluff or the wall, there's a whole new layer of houses. So, so it's like tiers of a wedding cake working its way up to the top of the bluff. And then if we go the other way from the top of the stairs, again, we have wonderful houses to check out. And in fact, you can circle around and end back at the portal. But if we decide to just keep going west on 11th Street, you know, it's just house after house that you can find that's worth uh, looking at. And eventually, if you work your way to the north, you'll get down to Loris Avenue, and this is the intersection of Loris and, and Dell. But you can again see how the retaining walls are being used to create levels of development there. But this building that's right there at Loris and Dell, it's a fabulous mural. When Petey and I first started walking around the area, those murals were not there. So, so this is a recent development, just having these really creative murals all over um, Dubuque. So just walking around looking at murals would be, you know, it's well worth the time. And if you and if you continue to the north from here and and again just exploring wonderful streets, you'll eventually get to this stairway that leads from Montrose Terrace down to Bluff Street, just south of uh, of 15th Street in Dubuque. And from here you can do you can you know, if you're done walking, you can go back to where you started at the library, or you can uh, continue east on, on 15th Street. And But before you start walking, if you just turn around, you can look behind you and you can get this idea of houses sort of being built on top of houses. And it's that sort of that uh, wedding cake tier effect. But if we go east on 15th Street, the first thing you're going to run into is this, uh, it's a bed and breakfast now, I believe, or at least a, an inn called the Richards House. And it's, I've been told that this has been under renovation for, you know, for years and years and years. But you can see that when it gets done, it should be spectacular. And if the inside is anything like the outside, it's got to be wonderful. But if you step back from here, and you look at the roof, the roof are slate tiles and it has designs and patterns in it. So, so you just can find all of these things. And then if you go just, just another half block east, you get into this situation where you have two Catholic churches within a long fly ball of each other that they're less than a, less than a quarter of a mile apart. Now the church in the distance that's no longer a church. It, it used to be called St. Mary's, and the close church is called St. Patrick's, but the St. Mary's church is now a development called uh, Steeple Square. But when they were built, they were built to serve two different ethnic groups. And if you go to, you know, you know, large city, you know, go to neighborhoods that were built, you know, in the in the late 19th century, you'll find you know, like there's neighborhoods in Chicago where you look around and there's there's Catholic churches less than a block from each other. But what you find out is, oh, this is a Lithuanian church, a Polish church, a German church, an Irish church, and and what have you. And in this case, the uh, the closest church was was predominantly Irish. The church in the distance was was German. And and I imagine if there had been another big ethnic group in Dubuque, there'd be a third church that we'd see, but but we have two. So so again, you know, it's just so much, it's so interesting to see how our life has changed so much over the years. And then then just continuing on 15th Street, we run into another one of these. This is at uh, 15th and Central and one of these fantastic murals. I mean, I just think that's you know, just really an amazing design. And if you just go up a block, 
you'll see another, you know, there's just murals all along this area to check out. And in, and in addition to checking out murals, you can check out these build, you know, these older buildings like this. Is, this is a building from the 1880s that was built as a grocery store. But if you just look at the details on the window and up at the roof line, and then if you take a closer look, that was a grocery store that was uh, made by a guy owned by a person named J.P. Schroeder. And if you look carefully or have some imagination, you can see a J and a P and an S in there. But again, it's these details that you find as you just wander around. And one of the first things I did when I started this project is I got topo maps of the Galena, both Galena and Dubuque. And one of the first things that I uh, grabbed my attention was this very narrow valley, just you know, going at a north, almost at a straight angle from northwest from downtown Dubuque called the Cooler Valley. And so I said, well, I've got to explore that because, you know, who knows, maybe I'll find some stairs, maybe in the bluffs I'll find something of interest. And so I did, you know, so I did that and I started the walk right from this from this massive building that was a it was built in the 1890s and it was a brewery. Now it never came, it never the brewery didn't survive prohibition. So this building has had many different commercial uses, but again, if you just look around, the details on it are amazing, like this stylized D, and if you look closely, you can see that it's, you know, barley and hops being tied together to make beer. So, so and this, this brewery is at 30th and Jackson Street in Dubuque. So Petey and I, we just started walking down Jackson Street to see what we could find. And in about oh, a little less than two blocks later, we ran into this and it was an old floors and greenhouse complex that's been turned into this urban farm, urban experience thing called Convivium. That there's classrooms there, there's restaurants, there's performance, art space, and they have a working urban farm there. And so you just look around, I mean, this is the inside, they even have murals inside here and and then if you go around the back that's a working farm and then one of the things i found out and one of the things you can look for as you walk around this neighborhood is they've taken over all kinds of backyards to grow food in there so so you know right here in the middle of the dubuque they're they're trying to create a a community farm uh in in the cooler valley so so again that was I found that pretty cool, but but we continued on Jackson Street because one of the things I wanted to check out was Dubuque's Comiskey Park. I've been a lifelong White Sox fan, and so therefore I had no other choice but to make the pilgrimage to Dubuque's Comiskey Park. And if once you get there, you can see that there's a monument, you know, a dedication plaque called Comiskey Field, and it's in honor of Charles A. Comiskey. Well, that's the same Comiskey who started the Chicago White Sox and built Comiskey Park in Chicago. So somehow there's a connection between the Chicago White Sox and Dubuque. And then from this point, we just wandered a little bit to the east and we ran into this. It's the B Branch Greenway. Well, when Petey and I first were walking around this area, this was not here. And and so I did some research and and apparently there was a creek called B Branch Creek and and to support development in this in this cooler valley area they pretty much put the creek underground in culverts unfortunately whenever there was a storm the culverts couldn't handle the water so there were just massive floods in this area so so finally after decades of abuse the city of Dubuque decided to get rid of the culverts and turn it into this greenway so there'd be plenty of area for the uh, flood water to go. But once again, it just adds more to your uh, walking experience as you walk around. And so 
so one of the things that you can look for in Dubuque in this area is as part of this flood control project, they converted many of the alleys into green alleys. So instead of having water just rush into the street and into the flood zone, they have it with these bricks so water can percolate into the water table and slow down the water that gets into the flooded areas. And again, you've got you know, if you just walk around, you'll just find these type of details on buildings. And one of the cool things I found was I found this. It was behind a house. You know, I didn't, I did not trespass. I stayed on, but at the corner of uh, 24th and Broadway in, um, in Dubuque, you can look behind somebody's house and you can see this sort of eyebrow. It's, you know, it's brick eyebrow and this opening into the ground and I didn't know if it was a mine or something else. Well, I, I did a talk for the um, Dubuque Library and somebody told me, well, that's actually as part of a, uh, you know, there was a brewery in the area and they had built, they had a whole network of caves for storing the beer, keeping the beer cool. And so you can still find uh, something like this. But then if we just sort of swing back to the, uh, where the B Branch Greenway ends, right where it ends at the north end of it, there's a rail trail here. And that was the, uh, it's called the Iowa Heritage Trail. And it's on the former right of way, the Chicago and Great Western. And this rail trail goes to Dyersville where Field of Dreams was filled. And unfortunately, the, there was gonna be a baseball game in, in Dyersville at the Field of Dreams with the Yankees and the White Sox. But, because of COVID, it, it didn't happen. Hopefully, hopefully it'll happen sometime in the future when we're all able to travel. But when Petey and I were walking along here, we all of a sudden heard um, this amazing concert of church bills. And we looked to the West and that's also part of wondering. It's not what you see, it's what you hear and what you feel and what you sense. And we looked to the West and there was a church uh, and it turns out the name of that church is Holy Ghost Church. So, <clears throat> so we walked over there and behind the church at the base of the bluff, we found this grotto and just a lineup of statues. It's almost like an all-star lineup of Catholic saints because we have the infant of Prague, we have the Virgin of Guadalupe, we have Francis of Assisi, then there's Jesus and Mary, but it's just dozens, you know, it must be a couple dozen statues there and we sort of just we just walked along the the base of the bluff behind the church and then we found this path going to the top and and there's francis of assisi to greet us there now i don't recommend you taking this path because there's there's brambles there's fallen trees and all of that but Petey and i did it anyways and then when we got to the top we ran into a no trespass private property sign and no trespassing, but there was a sign describing what this was, this re-evolution farmstead. And so I called up the people who, you know, the couple there, and it turns out that this land up here had been the athletic fields for the parochial school down at the base, of, down at the bottom of the bluff. And when this land became surplus, uh, this couple, they've bought the land and they're in the process now of turning it into an urban farm. And so, so it's just it's just so interesting to see how people can repurpose, you know, land and structures for completely different purposes. Like in Galena, you've got the old high school that's now a housing development. So so you have all of that. And you just and you find these things by just walking around and seeing, you know, just go a little bit further and see what you run into. And so what we'll do is we'll we'll hop on the other side of the river over to East, East Dubuque. And in East Dubuque, if you go to the main drag there, at the very end of it, there's this really dilapidated street called Jordan Avenue. In fact, they, you know, they close it down in the winter because it's it's so dilapidated. So so, but if you walk along that street for just a little bit, you'll run into this stairway going up through the woods. And when you get to the top, 
you run into the, you know, these mound conflict, the, the Dunleith Mound Complex in Gramercy Park. And, and that's also part, you know, when you think about the area, you know, not only do you have Galena and Dubuque, but you have all of these, you know, bluffs and things, and you know there's got to be Indian ruins on them, such as these mounds, and and there's just so much you can you can find. And so I know I've only touched the, you know, just touched the surface of what you can find, but I just wanted to, you know, just just show just just how rich it is for exploring and. So one of the things I like to do in all the talks is I, I, I like to have this slide here. That's my dog, Lucky. He's no longer with us. Uh, Petey, Petey has his slot, but Lucky and I, we, we did the Appalachian Trail together and we did lots of hiking together. So we had plenty of time for conversations. And Lucky always told me, all walks are good. I don't know how long this walk is going to be. But I do know one thing. This is the best walk I have ever been on because this is a walk I am on right now. So with that, you know, let me uh, take take this screen sharing off and, you know, we can, or here, I, there's a stop share. And I'll open up to any questions anybody might have. A question, David. Sure. Thank you so much. That well, was thanks. excellent. Well, excellent. thank you. Um, my sister and best friend live in Dubuque, so oh, okay. uh, and I love Galena. So this is I'll have to go on some of those walks when I go to visit. Yeah, but, good. Um, so I I assume that that um, these towns that have the towns and cities that have the stairs are hilly. Yes. Um, are there any others in Illinois and where else in the states would I find? Okay. Those? Well, uh, in the area. Uh, if you go up the Mississippi River, Alma, Wisconsin has quite a few stairs. Okay. Um, Red Wing, Minnesota has quite a few stairs. St. Paul has quite a few stairs. Um, and then, oh gosh, I'm drawing the blank. What is Savannah? Is what where the um, Savannah, Illinois? They have one set of stairs, but it's really dilapidated. I mean, you know, sort of it's like an erector set that looks when you step on it, it feels like it's going to collapse, and it's and it's not particularly, it it's not as attractive as going on the stairs in in Galena. But mm -hmm. but there are you know, but pretty much cities you know like Cincinnati, Los Angeles, cities that have hills have have lots of stairs. And one of the projects that Petey and I did. Bisbee, Arizona is an old mining town. Hmm. And in that town, there was no flat, well, what fl little flat land there was, was all occupied by commercial structures. So hmm. all the miners had to build their shacks on the side of, side of the hills. And the only way to get there were by stairs. I mean, it started out as mule trails, then wooden stairs. And then in the 1930s, the WPA converted them all to concrete. So, so there's there's plenty of places they have lots of stairs. But what's nice about Galena and Dubuque is there's the stairs, but there's also this mixture of just wonderful buildings to check out and and the details on the building. So, so I mean it's you know and whichever way you turn, you're not going to go wrong. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you. Any other questions? I was going to say you mentioned the Sheehan House over by the Eli Washburn, the or Eli Washburn House where the Sheehans bought it. Yeah. My mother worked there back in the early '40s. Oh, really? For the Sheehans. I didn't know. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Where, where is your book for sale now? Uh, it's well, it's. Um, I believe the Galena Gazette has some copies of the book. The uh, the History Museum on Ben Street has some copies, and also River Lights Bookstore has them. And then you can certainly get it online either on my website or at at Amazon. Oh, great! Yeah, so so it is it's it's available. I mean, you know, it'd be nice if it was in every store, but because of COVID, I you know, as I say, I should have been to Galena at least two or three times by now since I did it, but obviously I'm, I'm shut down like everybody else is. 
Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. This is wonderful. Thank well, thank you.